Quiet on the set. Quiet on the set. Five count. Five, four, three. <laughs> Hey Mepham, welcome back to the Midweek Update, and the first one of 2023. I can't believe it's already 2023. Me either, but there's no time to lose. Let's take a look at the gym volleyball tournament that happened before the break, and lunch in the library, and you give us a minute, we give you a month. This and more as we take a look at what's going on this week on the Midweek Update. I'm Brianna Goodman. And I'm Ryan Marr, and welcome back to the Midweek Update, the maybe show that brings you closer to the people and places in and around the Mepham community. This week is a very special episode for us sophomores. It is. We got to try to make our first ever packages. Both sophomore classes were tasked with a project called Package in a Period. That means we had one class period, only one, to do all of our filming and interviews. It was definitely not an easy task, but we learned so much. Something else that doesn't seem like the easiest task is eating lunch in the library. Yeah, there's always so many people working and you have to be quiet. I always see a bunch of people eating up there, but I never know why. You're in luck. BMB Sophia Valadaris got to see more inside the library. Giving up your midday meal to go to the library is something that sounds crazy to some students. But to many of the freshmen of Mepham High School, spending your lunch period in the library rather than the cafeteria has become a normal day-to-day -day experience. It's usually very quiet and very peaceful and you can really get your work done and it's a really nice environment. And also I get to be around friends and we get to be like in an environment where we can actually like study and be productive without like the distractions of the normal lunchroom. The freshmen of Mepham have been moving from the cafeteria to the library during their lunchtime for a variety of reasons. Whether it's to get homework done or simply hang out with their friends. The library has been a great place to relax for these students. I think a lot of the students come to the library during the lunch periods because it's a place where they can get their work done. Um, a lot of our students come to use the printers and print out their homework. And they can, we have textbooks, we have books, we have um, access to a lot of different stuff. We also have games and stuff that students can play so they can also kind of decompress a little bit. It's very hectic during lunchtime for the freshmen, and the lunch monitors have recognized that many students may go to the library simply to unwind. Mr. Richards is a teacher and a lunch monitor that watches over the freshmen in the cafeteria. A lot of things are online now, so students have to print out classwork or some homework materials. Also, it can be loud, especially if they at lunch, where it's all the ninth graders, so if they want to study before an assessment, it's definitely quieter in the library. The Library of Mepham has many other benefits too. On top of being a great resource for books and a great place to relax, there are other recreational and fun activities that can be done here. So during their lunch period, students can use the computers, use the printers, they can check out books. We have life-size Jenga they can play. We also have other games that they can check out like Jenga and chess boards and checker boards. And and they can do the stick together, which they seem to like, where they it's basically like a paint by number, but with stickers instead. The crowd of students that has begun to form in the library has only grown as the year progresses. But the staff in the library welcome the students with open arms and are very excited to see the students utilize the library and its resources. Yes, I love that the students are using the library. That's why we're here. Those are our customers. And as you can see, it is very busy, especially during fifth period freshman lunch. Although students cannot actually eat lunch in the library, the Mepham Library is open all day and welcomes visitors from all over the school, no matter what period or grade. From b and I'm Sophia Valadares. Thanks, Sophia. Now it makes sense why so many people go there, and of course that you don't eat while inside. I never knew all the different games the library had to offer. Mepham has so many different opportunities to offer during the day and after school. Something else that happened during the school day is the annual gym volleyball tournament. Every December, all gym classes participate in the annual tournament, but I never know the reasoning of why we have it. Michaela Dobby got to take a look at the action. Spiking, setting, and hitting around the holidays is not typical since it is usually a season of peace and rest. But for Mepham High School, it is one way to spread joy throughout the holiday season. Um, it's a tournament where the whole school competes in a volleyball like tournament, and if you win, you keep going on, and then eventually you can win the whole tournament for the whole school. This tournament is about more than just volleyball. At 
all the classes come together, all the grades come together, new friendships are formed, and everyone really encourages each other, and everyone just has fun. It's really about having fun, making new friends, and it's really great to see the whole Mepham community being one. I do enjoy it because I get to be on a team with my friends, and we get to play our other friends. This volleyball tournament brings people together and forms new friendships. It's just like fun to play other people that maybe you do know or like don't know and just to see and just have fun. Not only are all students participating in this tournament, but they're also furthering their volleyball skills and being active. For BNB, I'm Michaela Dobby. Congrats again on winning this big event for the second year in a row. Wow, I can't believe it. These teams had to be rigged. I don't know, man. She is an amazing volleyball player. That must be it. Never mind. Luke Yepes took a look at how the finals went and spoke to their student coach. This year in the gym volleyball tournament semifinals, the Pickles faced Fuego, who they quickly eliminated with little to no struggle and with amazing team chemistry and an incredible defense. Now let's have a look at Raptors 13 with the game against the underdogs. Uh, I think we played great. Uh, Q definitely had a great coaching job even though he got taken down early in the regular rounds. But I think we can take this all the way. The competition doesn't look very good. Raptors 13 had made additions the day of the tournament including Sean McQuillan as the head coach. Every team had a coach basically but no one, no other coach, I feel like, really knew volleyball except me in a way. It wasn't just being there just to be there. And Michaela Dobby as an additional player. It was really exciting. I mean, especially the atmosphere in the gym, just having the support of the whole Mepham school. It was really such an amazing accomplishment that me and my team were able to get there. With Sean McQuillan at the head coach, the team had only one last obstacle in their way. The team that had some thinking that they would win, and that team is Pickles. In the finals, Raptors 13 led 6-3 early against their opponent. But the Pickles were able to fight back. From there, Raptors 13 went on a 7 point streak due in large to the trio of Kieran Kehoe, Charlie Leo, and Michaela Dalby. From there on, Raptors 13 was able to cruise to the win despite a late rally by the Pickles, finishing with a score of 25-16. Coach Sean McQuillan became the first student in the tournament history to win as both a player and a coach, but somehow he is more than that to the team. The name Raptors 13 was a little bit of a joke, but mostly in honor of our coach Sean McQuillan as he was number 13 for the Mepham Pirates on the volleyball team, and his number actually got retired, so we wanted to do that in honor of him. Sean is graduating this June. He left a big impact on the school's volleyball team and helped win two gym volleyball titles in his time here at Mepham. He will always be remembered as his jersey heads up to the rafters. For b, &B I'm Luke Epes. Amazing job to the whole team and their coach, b, &B s very own Sean McQuillan. Keeping with the theme of sports, here's Jake Mano with your sports report. Thanks guys. Moving on to a busy weekend as the boys basketball team lost to Jericho in a heartbreaking defeat of 58-34. to Kieran Kehoe did push away as the bright spot here for the Pirates as he tied for the leading game score with 11. The Pirates moved to 3-9 on the year as they looked to bounce back yesterday versus Great Neck, Great Neck South. Now on to the girls as they also took on Jericho over the weekend where they lost 58-40. to this moves their team to 6-6 six six on the year with BNB's own Michaela Dobby leading the pact with 11 points. But speaking of BNB, the girls' next game versus Great Neck South was here at Mepham, but if for any reason you happen to miss any of it, we got you with full coverage of the game. But as we step away from Mepham for a second, the NFL playoffs are in full swing. And so I don't waste too much of your time, I'm going to go straight to my predictions. I have the 49ers and the Chiefs in a Super Bowl 54 rematch where you can't bet against this much of a talented team. But that's all from me. I've been Jake Mano. Now back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Jake, and good luck to all the teams. Sports is a huge part of the Mepham community, but what else is there? There are so many clubs and after-school activities that anyone can get involved in. I always love seeing what Skull and Bones is up to. 
If you don't know already, the musical was announced and the starting process has already begun. B&B's Amanda Ali has more. I'm Amanda Ali in front of the Mepham Auditorium where today the dance auditions for the upcoming spring musical, Grease, are happening today. The most talented actors and dancers that walk Mepham hallways are going to come together to give it their all, embracing the 70s rom-com flair that is stuck with generations to get a chance to perform in the big show. I cannot wait to figure out who's who and what's what as we get closer to the actual show. If you want to stay up to date with the latest news on Mapham's rendition of this beloved musical, you're already in the right place. For more information, make sure to join the Skull and Bones Google Classroom or talk to Ms. Demetrio and Ms. Sira for more. That's it for me, and back to you guys in the studio. Um, Ryan, I didn't know you were auditioning. Well, not exactly, but I'm really excited for Grease Lightning. Of course, but we still have some time before that. So before we look forward, it's time to look back at last year. You mean December? Well, New Year, New Me. <laughs> but don't worry about the segments that you love. They're staying the same. Here's Arielle Budrum to introduce your next segment. Thanks, Bree. Last month was full of so many different activities, sports, and so much more, especially a bunch of new shows here at BNB. Let's take a look, and we give you a minute, and we give you a month. wait for you guys to see everything we have in store this new year and we're bringing back covering sports now back to you guys in the studio thanks Ariel I can't wait for everyone to see what we have in store until then I'm Brianna Goodman and I'm Ryan Moore and we'll see you all next midweek I think we get it. we get it you can dance <laughs> <laughs>